I'm sure there are people who thought that. It just wasn't what happened. That's President Biden talking with Israeli TV ahead of his visit to the Middle East, once again mistaking attacking Trump as leadership. It's one thing in domestic politics he sort of expected, but overseas it's a little different. Love him or hate him, Trump's success in the Middle East is undeniable. He tamed Iran, moved the U.S. Embassy to Jerusalem, most notably brokered more Israeli peace deals than any U.S. president. He reshaped the region in a way not seen since Carter, and Carter didn't reshape it in necessarily all good ways. Mr. Biden leaves for Saudi Arabia tomorrow morning, where he'll try to convince them, the Saudis, of his willingness to also stand up to Iran. Brett Bruins here, former director of global engagement in the Obama White House. Does playing domestic politics on foreign soil work? We used to say that politics ends at the water's edge. We unfortunately, I think, have uh, done away with that tradition and we're the worst for it. Uh, but let's not forget uh, the Trump administration also oh, yeah. played a lot of politics overseas. Mike Pompeo addressed the Republican National Committee from an official trip uh, to Jerusalem. So both parties have been doing this. I wish they would stop because it undermines our credibility with allies, as well as the seriousness with which our adversaries take us. So I think it's important that we take a long, hard look at where we should be playing these political games. You, you make a great point in terms of both our allies and our adversaries have to take us seriously. And, and fair point that 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 tradition is long gone by both uh, both parties. But President Biden certainly does not have the same attitude towards Iran that President Trump did in terms of uh, making them pay a price for their bad actions and also then for his words on how to stop Iran getting uh, a nuclear uh, weapon. Uh, here is uh, President Biden uh, talking about that today with the Israeli prime minister. Today, you and I also discussed America's commitment to ensuring Iran never obtains a nuclear weapon. This is a vital security interest to both Israel and the United States, and I would add, for the rest of the world as well. Then he got lectured by the Israeli prime minister. It, it harkened back to the meetings that you'd see between President uh, Obama then and Benjamin Netanyahu. Yeah, except I, I do have to say that the Iranians are in a tough spot now that you have uh, relations between Israel and a number of Gulf Arab states, and even those like Saudi Arabia, with which they don't have um, official relations, they've got very close unofficial ties, and that creates a pretty um, strong alliance against Iranian efforts, whether it's towards developing a nuclear weapon or some of their other extracurricular activities. And you're right, President Trump deserves uh, credit for having forged the Abraham Accords, which led to diplomatic relations between the UAE, uh, between Bahrain, Israel, um, that is an important piece now in this puzzle of trying to put together uh, a defensive position against what um, may be coming from Iran, because obviously the nuclear deal is not coming back together in the way that they would oppose. There's going to be a deal probably announced tomorrow. This is from Axios. Uh, Saudi Arabia gets a couple of islands. Israel gets freedom of navigation. Uh, the Saudis in some way may not necessarily recognize the Israel, but you start to get a normalization, uh, not quite Abraham Accord level, but, but very, very significant in terms of where it's come. Did this happen because of Biden's diplomacy or in spite of Biden's diplomacy because of President Trump's Abraham Accords? Well, I think the Abraham Accords were a key foundational piece here. Nonetheless, you've got to give the Biden administration credit for uh, forging this further. And I think that's what we're seeing come together here is building on uh, that foundation. And it's important. And it's not just important because it's a couple of islands or because, you know, there's uh, a warming of, of ties from a security standpoint, from a military standpoint, intelligence sharing. All of that is going to be much closer as a result of tomorrow's agreement. Yeah, no, the, the, uh, undeniably, uh, peace is good. Conceivably, those who bring it should get credit for it. A uh, lot of criticism, as we've talked about before, of President Biden going to Saudi Arabia at all. He said that he was going to turn Saudi Arabia into a pariah state. Uh, it was, had very tough words for its leader. And now it has to go with hat in hand, for lack of a better term, to, to try and, and, and make peace and uh, renew the relationship. Here's the president on that today. 
My views on Khashoggi have made been absolutely positively clear. Um, and I have never been quiet about talking about human rights. I'm going to be meeting with nine other heads of state. It's not just as happens to be in Saudi Arabia. I can't help but think about this, that candidate Biden says it's going to be a pariah state. This is a guy who had been in foreign policy for 40 years. He was elected on this idea that it was going to be the adults in the room. Shouldn't he have known that at some point that was going to come back and haunt him? Well, I, I have to say, this is a, a point on which I am very critical of the Biden of, of administration. Uh, I don't think that we should be going to Riyadh without significant concessions on human rights. Uh, Biden is not only giving Mohammed bin Salman, who you see on the screen there, the crown prince of Saudi Arabia, uh, essentially a pass for having assassinated in the Saudi consulate in Istanbul, one of uh, the major dissident uh, figures in the country. But he's also sending a message to other countries that our uh, moral uh, authority is eroding, that when we call them out for human rights abuses, you can be sure they're going to point to this case of the president having backtracked on his commitment to uh, holding the Saudis accountable for not only the murder of Jamal Khashoggi, but many other human rights violations. Yeah, well, you, you point out that whatever the president does in one place in the world, uh, the repercussions of it and the ripples effects uh, are seen and watched around the world. You were talking about that all the way back last year this time when we, uh, we talked so much about Afghanistan. Brett, it's always good to see you. Thank you. you bet. Yeah, it's been too long. Thanks for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to subscribe. Click the red button to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.